Do you understand the why of your life? So when I say, do you understand the why? Some of you will say, what do you mean? The question is, do you know why you exist? Do you know why you are here? Some of us can say, I am here. I'm in Cleveland. I'm in California. I'm in New Jersey, New York, wherever. Or you can say, when? It's 2021. I'm living in the midst of a pandemic. I am in uh, the process of uh, buying a new home or or taking a new job, or I'm employed or unemployed. We can say the when, and we can say the where, and the how, but the why. Why do you exist? Why are you here? What is your purpose? When we think about the why, it's important for us to understand that uh, right now we are in a season of challenge and a season of upheaval in our nation and in our lives personally because of the pandemic, because of the social and political climate of our country. So I wanna suggest something to you. I came, I've come today with nothing but good news for you. Nothing but good news. Number one, get ready. Restoration is coming. God is about to restore your life. God is about to restore our nation. God is about to restore your world. Everything around you, everything that has been taken from you, everything that you have lost, everything that you have been denied is about to be restored to you but you have to be ready. It is not enough. It is absolutely not enough just to stand and wait. You have to be ready. What does it take to be ready for restoration? It means that you must acknowledge that God has gifts for you, that God has, has blessings for you. You have to acknowledge that. And when you acknowledge that, then you can be ready to receive it. And you've got to believe that God wants to do it for you, for you individually, but for all of us collectively. Restoration is coming, but you got to be ready. Now, let me tell you about what happens then when restoration comes. Your season of blessing will unfold for you when you surrender to your purpose. Your season of blessing will unfold for you when you surrender to your purpose. Far too many of us are trying to do things because other people are doing them trying to be what other people were, trying to be what we saw as an example growing up, trying to be like somebody else, doing a job rather than living their purpose. I want to encourage you today that when you surrender to your purpose, your season of blessing will come. Your season of blessing will unfold before you in ways that you've never, ever believed before. But there's a couple of things that go along with surrendering to your purpose. And one of those is authenticity. You have to be authentic. You cannot be somebody else. I told a friend the other day, uh, I wanted to play the piano years ago because I saw people playing the piano and I wanted to be able to play like them. And so I used to sit down and plunk on the piano or as my mother would say, beat on the piano. And I, I could make some sound, but not much music. But I wanted to learn how to play. So I took lessons. I learned very quickly when I took piano lessons that this was not something that I had a skill for, nor did I have the patience to learn it. I had to realize that my skills were in other areas that were in line with my purpose. So my being authentic about my purpose was the key to my season of blessing. You must be authentic about your purpose. Second, you must be vulnerable. You must be willing to become vulnerable. Vulnerability comes when you are, are open about your issues, your challenges, the difficulties, the problems that you face, the roadblocks that are in front of you. When you are able to be vulnerable without fear, without fear of judgment, without fear of loss, because a lot of us think about uh, change in terms of loss. It's a change for many of us to be vulnerable. And we think of that, so if I become vulnerable, if I, sh if I expose my weaknesses, then I'm gonna lose power. None of us are really in control of our lives anyway. God is the ultimate source that's in control. So we have to be willing to become vulnerable. We have to be authentic, but be our truest selves. And then we have to be vulnerable. We have to be willing to risk it all, to hang it all out there and let the chips fall where they may. Because when you do, then you can truly surrender to your purpose and watch your season of blessing unfold in your life. Then the last thing I want to suggest to you is this, that in our lives, we, we 
love God, we worship God, but guess what? Are we really worshiping God in spirit and in truth? Worshiping in spirit and in truth requires something of us, and that is God's righteousness. Real worship pours out of God's righteousness. It doesn't come from, as, as I suggested in my sermon this week, it doesn't come from knowing the right steps or knowing the right tunes or singing the right songs. Real worship comes from God's righteousness, not our own righteousness, because we have none. We have none. We, you know, Paul suggested in so many different ways that we're like filthy rags. We've sinned, we've fallen short of God's glory, but our salvation confers God's righteousness upon us. Confer and earn are two completely different things. When something is conferred, it's given. It is given. It has no requirements. Earning means I worked for it, I did my best to get it, and now I have achieved it. That's not how your salvation is. You didn't earn salvation. We can't. We didn't earn God's grace and mercy. We can't. But it's conferred to us because of God's son, Jesus Christ, and because of his redeeming blood that he shed on a cross at Calvary. So I want to suggest to you that you'll begin to truly praise God, truly praise God, when you take on the righteousness of God, when you acknowledge that Jesus Christ is your Savior and your Lord, you make him daily the Lord of your life. That's a daily process. It's a daily process. You're saved when you acknowledge and accept the blood of Jesus that was shed for you, but he becomes the Lord of your life every single day. You wake up every morning and have a choice whether or not you make him the Lord of your life. And I hope that you will make the decision that Jesus is the Lord of your life. The why of your life, what is the why of your life? It is the purpose for which God has called you and you must walk in that purpose. You must dwell in that purpose, live in that purpose. And as you do, you'll see that unfolding season of blessing, that phenomenal unfolding season of blessing come out for you and the, what will usher forth from that season of blessing in your life and from the depths of your very soul will be real praise. God bless you. Have an amazing week.